Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group with a special video report on uh, major trends and reversals update. And I'm recording this on February 9th, or excuse me, 2019. Uh, this is just part one of a long term written and video reports that I do for our DT Reports subscribers. This part one that we're going to take a look at today is for stock indexes and interest rates. Um, part two will be a comprehensive report on gold, silver, GDX, euro, dollar, crude, and more. And the part two video written reports will be issued on Wednesday, February 13th, but they'll only be available to DT Report subscribers. And of course, our regular DT reports will keep you updated if you're a subscriber on the immediate reversals and trend continuation signals. So I, I'm making this part available to the public uh, just to introduce you to our DT reports and the kind of material that you would receive in them. Um, so hopefully you'll become a subscriber. Now, we, I only give uh, some kind of discount deal on our reports a couple of times a year. So it'll be many months before we, I give another sort of discount deal or bonus month subscription uh, offer that we've got this month. So through just this Sunday, February 17th for new subscribers is we're going to add an additional full month onto any of the three month subscriptions for one of our DT reports. So you'll get four months for the price of three. So if you're interested in any of the markets that we follow with the DT reports, I really think this is a steel deal to keep abreast daily of all the major trends and specific trade strategies for futures, stocks, ETFs, Euro, and more. So go to dynamictraders.com slash DT reports and check out uh, what all you get with our DT reports and keep in mind that if you're interested this is the week to subscribe because we're tossing in an extra month but that's only through Sunday February 17th okay let's get started and take a look at the stock indexes and before we begin I did forget to mention that if you'd like to download the written report in a PDF file it's a companion to this video report and it has all the charts and summarizes the position etc uh, feel free to do that it's absolutely no charge you go to dynamictraders.com and go to our DT traders news and research uh, resource page and you can get the uh, written report that's a companion to this and one more thing I want to mention is I take everything uh, that I'm describing to you, the analysis, the trade strategies, strategies, et cetera, from 30 years of practical uh, experience, both as an analyst, forecaster, and as a trader. And I want you to know that I really do trade. Uh, I trade futures, I trade ETS, and I do trade Forex. Uh, the only Forex market I trade is the Euro. But as you can see here, this is uh, Robbins, who has a great service, Robbins Trading Company, great service with their various contests uh, every year throughout the years. They've had them for over 30 years. Last year, uh, in 2018, you can see I was uh, first place in the uh, index and interest rate futures. That was a six-month contest. I had an 86.5% return la last year in their year-long Forex trading contest. I was third with a 70.4%. And uh, this year, just in the first month of the year, I'm, I'm in the top five, up 2.6%. Uh, but... I show this to you uh, so that you'll know that I'm actually making trading decisions on both short term and long term day by day. And that's how I look at the information that I'm providing you today, as well as what I provide subscribers uh, every day in our DT reports. OK, now, finally, let's get started. This is the SPX monthly data. And again, it's up to date through February 9th. So this uh, last little tiny bar here only represents the first week in February on this monthly data. So a slight review. Uh, some of you may have seen um, uh, one of our long, longer term reports several weeks ago. We we're looking at this data and uh, uh, and I, the idea was that if we traded below the April 2018 low, that would confirm that we had completed the bull trend uh, up into the September high, uh, September 2018 high, almost a, uh, almost 10 years uh, bull trend, one of the longest bull trends that we've had in history without um, a substantial uh, 20, 30 
percent plus decline. Well, we've already had a 20 percent decline over just a couple of months, but uh, there would typically be a much longer to go time-wise. Well, what I stated uh, a couple of months ago is that if we took out this low, it would confirm that this uh, major bull trend was complete and we would be sideways to down in a correction uh, that would last many months and potentially reach at least a 50% retracement, which is down around 1862, quite a ways below uh, where the market is now and where uh, we went on this December decline. So what I always do is when we I identify a probable position and trend of a market is then identify what can the market do uh, to avoid that outlook or at least make it questionable. Um, and so that's what we're going to take a look at now. Have we indeed completed uh, this major bull trend into the September high, which is clearly and uh, very confidently been signaled by December's decline below what I got labeled the wave four of five low. Let's take a look at the weekly data and see if that uh, confirms what I'm looking at there. So here's the weekly data just from the September high. And uh, we had it labeled differently uh, several weeks ago, uh, but now that uh, the the real signal that we're not going to be in a consistent uh, bear trend uh, or probably not going to be in a consistent bear trend has been what we call this overlap in the last couple of weeks where we closed well into the range what is now labeled a wave A the wave A closing range decline and we did that um, almost four, four weeks ago where we closed above the closing low of what's now labeled a wave A. So this was uh, is now labeled an A, B, C. No other way to look at it. A, B, C. However, has that completed a corrective decline? Is a simple A, B, C correction complete? And is it going to be followed by continuation of the bull trend to a new high? So probably not. Probably not. Uh, probably we are now going to uh, unfold in a much more complex correction, which basically means anything other than a simple ABC. But we still probably have many months to go net sideways to down. And we'll probably still reach that, what was it, 18, around 1862 eventually. Because whether it's a simple correction or a complex correction, we usually do reach that 50% retracement, and that's within the range of what I got labeled this wave four. That's a typical target based on Elliott wave. If indeed this is an end of wave five uh, that we've completed in September, and I don't know any other way to look at this advance from an Elliott wave pattern perspective has really settled it for me that we've completed it. It's just that after these past few weeks, it's not going to be a simple impulsive trend down. Uh, it's more, more than likely it's going to be quite a complex correction uh, with a lot of false starts and false bottoms, a lot of overlaps that we're going to have over that time. So I want to show you, uh, before I get back to the immediate position, and a, a great trade setup probably in the next few days is I want to show you a chart that can kind of prepare you for possibilities over the next several weeks to several months. This is a weekly data for the Dow Jones 30 and it goes from oh, late 1999 uh, well into 2003 and uh, between uh, January it was actually the top was made I think uh, the late uh, December, we'll just say January 2000, into the 2002 October low, uh, that's uh, over two and a half years, uh, just a consistent bear trend, but boy, look at this choppy pattern on the way down. Uh, it's not any simple corrective pattern, and this was a, a really big decline that occurred. Um, I think, as I recall, is around 50%. Let's just find out for sure so we get some perspective uh, on this decline and this data. 38, 38, 39%. Um, I think some of the other indexes actually hit about, uh, about 50%. But, boy, about 40% decline over two and a half years. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is that 
Um, there were many times, in the, especially in the initial few months, when it looked like a correction was complete. Uh, and let me just add some data on here. And particularly as of around June, the middle of 2001, uh, we had sharp declines, advance, another decline, uh, not to a new low, another high, could have been like an ABC, and then we did make a new low on another. This is a very impulsive decline. Then we traded back up into the range of the past declines. That would be an overlap. Um, certainly around October of 2000 here, we might have been looking at this that we just completed an ABC flat. That would have been a, a good call at the time. But here we went sideways, and then, boy, we made another sharp decline. And if we take a few months off here, we'd say, oh, we've resumed a bear trend, and bang, turns right around, goes up, makes a new high above this period. Ah, finally, A, B, C, X, or A, B, C, D, E, or however you want to count it, complex decline over with. Well, as we know, it wasn't. I'm showing you this that the market can indicate um, in complex corrections uh, that at many different points and inflection points that that correction could be complete. Excuse me, um, could be complete, uh, and, but we got faked out for a long time. Now, I was trading around this time. I had been, had been trading for almost 15 years during, during this time, and I know many of you that are listening to this uh, we're not trading around that time. So I brought this up to you that we don't always have nice, clearly defined uh, patterns, whether they're corrections or impulse trends for that matter. And that I think it's a possibility we're going to have this kind of prolonged uh, complex correction and fake outs over the next several months to, and possibly well into 2020. We'll keep on top of that in our regular reports and try and identify if we have indeed completed a correction and we'll identify what the market can do to signal that it's completed. But we want to keep not lose track of that higher time frame pattern and re pattern reversal signal that was made in December that we've completed the bull market top. Well, I'm back with the SPX weekly data. So what I look at when things get maybe a little bit confusion, confusing, they could go either way, I look at the next smaller time frame. So what I'm going to be focusing on in the months ahead are the weekly trends and see if they give us some signal uh, that if we're going to continue this much higher time frame corrective bear trend are, have we completed a simple ABC correction and we're going to make new highs? You know, I try to not be prejudiced one way or the other. I try to just go with however the technical position is setting up. Well, as of this past week, the week ending February 8th, our weekly momentums uh, were completed week two of dual look back overbought. That itself is warning us that a uh, weekly high uh, is close, if not complete. So I'm going to go straight to the daily data. Coming up from the December low, we got a beautiful five-wave advance into the February 5th high. Not only that, uh, wave, the potential wave five subdivided nicely into five waves. Uh, so more than likely, we have indeed already completed that weekly high. And the price action of just the last couple of days has given us a strong signal that that's the case and that we've traded below the wave four, what I've got labeled, the wave four or five low. If, if that's the case, if these are labeled properly, and if that's how it actually is in this market, then we've completed wave five high and a weekly high. If that's the case, at a minimum, we should uh, be followed by a corrective decline that should reach around the 50% retracement at 25.43. That would be a minimum expectation on the downside. And at a minimum, we should be sideways to down and not complete a corrective decline before February 20th, which is the 38.2% time retracement of the five wave advance. And of course, our daily momentums have made dual look back bear reversals, while the weekly momentums were dual look back overbought again, an ideal dual time frame uh, momentum setup to have completed the higher time frame weekly high. 
So this is more than likely where we're at. Let's take a look at the 240 minute data. Just to, let's ratchet into this. And this is our, what I had labeled the wave four in the daily data. And again, probable one, two, three, four, five into the February 5th uh, top. So not only has the wave five looks like it's subdivided nicely into five waves, wave five of five looks like it's subdivided nicely into five waves. This is uh, last Wednesday's chart that I showed our uh, subscribers and that in that case just to trade below uh, what was uh, this low this would be Monday's low I'll just draw it on here what I showed to them was that should complete the higher time frame not just from the December or excuse me January 19th low but going all the way back to the December low that's how we use multiple time frame positions to identify reversals of higher time frames so what occurred over the last couple of days, the end of the week, we traded strongly down below the wave four or five low. That's another pattern reversal signal that the higher time frame weekly high is complete. And we traded down in a five wave impulsive type trend. If that's the case, we should complete a wave two correction early next week, ideally on Monday, followed by a continuation of the bear trend. And uh, of course, any trade above last week's high would void that whole bearish outlook. But this is maybe one of the cleanest, most ideal setups uh, for a short trade, uh, not just for a daily bear trend, but potentially a weekly bear trend that's going to last at least two to three weeks and have uh, a pretty substantial decline, uh, probably well over 100 points on the downside uh, in the weeks and days ahead. And what's important about it is minimal capital exposure meaning whenever we get that reversal signal on and we've already reached the 50 percent retracement but for instance the 240 minute momentum makes a, a bear reversal uh, we're going to have a really short small capital exposure to be able to participate and enter on the short side whether we're doing futures or we can do short the spy we can do there's bear etfs that are leveraged um options i'm not an options guy but i know if you're uh, successful with options you'll know the right option position to take for that potential not just multi-day but multi-week decline so keep that in mind in the near term and again in the weeks to come we're going to be uh, watching these weekly trends for signs that are we in Indeed, still in this monthly bear trend that should have many months to go probably into 2020 uh, to confirm or invalidate whether that's going to be the case, whether it's going to be a nice clean continuation of the bear trend or we're going to get that mess like we had in 2000, 2002 in the Dow with lots of false breakdowns and false reversals. Uh, we're going to need to really keep on top of it over the next uh, several months and I suspect we're going to continue uh, sideways to down uh, over the next several months in a sloppy bear market correction going into 2020. We'll, we'll keep you up to date on that day by day in our DT reports. Well let's take a look at uh, bonds and notes because they're also in a critical position right now. This is notes monthly data and we're going to take a look at the much longer term first, then we'll get down to weekly and daily data. But in the monthly data, since the June 16th high, we had this nice five wave decline into the October 2018 low, then a sharp rally since then. And we've come right up in the past couple of weeks into the 100% alternate price projection of what I got labeled as a wave two. And that's a sort of a natural sort of at least temporary resistance. Uh, it's also key because if this indeed is a completed five wave decline and for making a correction off the five wave decline, then the correction up from October 2018 should be greater in time and price than uh, a co correction uh, within the five wave decline. And of course, the, what I got labeled a wave two with the greatest correction in time and price. And that's why I've got the 100% alternate price projection and I'm also showing the 100% alternate time projection in the uh, July uh, middle of July or the end of, excuse me the end of July this would be the, these are the monthly data July of this year and what this indicates is that uh, this advance corrective advance should exceed 122.27 which is done by a small amount 
so far, so that was a good minimum target uh, to reach, but it should also not be complete prior to July 2019. So that would indicate that the uh, bonds and notes uh, have a few more months sideways to up. And typically, a correction to a five-wave decline reaches around 50% retracement, in this case, at 125.26. So more than likely, it's got a ways to go, both in time and price. And also, typically, a correction to a five-wave decline typically uh, is not complete prior to the 38.2% time retracement of that five-wave decline. And uh, the 38.2% time retracement is in September. So we've got a couple wave points in time and price here uh, to be aware of. And what it boils down to is more than likely, uh, we've got a ways to go on a corrective advance. And any high that we make right around now would just be a wave A of a, a minimal a, B, C type of correction, because corrections should all have three sections or more, or combinations of three. So again, we're probably just uh, at or near a wave A high, then we'd have a wave B correction, then continue to test or exceed, in this case probably exceed, uh, the January high, and potentially reaching around 125.26 and not completing that correction um, prior to to uh, actually August, it should exceed July of this year. So not, not completing it prior to August. Uh, so we've got a ways to go. Let's take a look at the weekly notes. And of course, the bonds are in exactly the same position. So here we're coming up from the October low and into uh, the early January high. Looks like a nice one, two, three, and like we've just completed completed a wave four a couple weeks ago, right at the 38% retracement of wave three, typical target uh, retracement target for a wave four, which is the 38 to 50% retracement of wave three. And then this past week, we got a bull reversal in the eight weekly momentum. And that is usually followed by another two to three weeks sideways to up. So if this is a wave four, the end of wave five target begins at 123.27. So right now, just looking at this data, we look and say we're probably going to be sideways up for another two to three weeks, probably going to exceed the January high and reach 123.27 before we make a more significant weekly top, which uh, should also be that wave A uh, that we're showing on the monthly data. Well, what could invalidate this uh, immediate bullish outlook? Well, let's go to the daily data and find out. There's the daily data, and again, this is uh, this is continuous, uh, the continuous futures contract, uh, right up through Friday, uh, uh, February 8th. I'm recording this on February 9th. So here we have this potential ABC wave four low, and in the last couple weeks. Uh, of net bullish uh, behavior for a possible part of a wave five advance, what could the market do to avoid any type of bullish pattern and probable any type of continuation of a bull trend? Well, simply trading below last week's low, that low was made February 5th, would void any sort of bullish wave count from an Elliott wave perspective and would also just from any logical perspective is uh, that we, you know, we made a couple, you know, higher highs, higher lows. We're starting up again, uh, potentially on a bullish trend, but boy, we take out that swing low and there's, there's no more uh, bullish count or pattern we can look at. So more than likely we've completed um, uh, we've completed a higher time frame top at this January 3rd high. Now, again, that doesn't mean that the whole correction, the higher time frame correction from the October low is complete. It just means that we're not probably not going to be immediately net bullish for the next two to three weeks and reaching 123.27. But until that happens, we have to assume the trend is bullish and we've got a ways to go that makes it a really good trade opportunity over the next two or three weeks because we're just coming off of this swing low 
And uh, let's take a look at the daily momentums here. Just made a bull reversal of the daily momentums. They're not overbought. So this is an immediate position to consider long trades. And again, if the market continues to advance, if bonds and notes do, the ideal time target for the wave five, as I recall, it begins around uh, February, next Friday, uh, February 15th, and goes into the 21st the following Thursday. So more than likely, if bonds and notes do continue to advance, they make a new high above the January 3rd high sometime between now and uh, uh, February 21st. Uh, we're going to complete the end of wave five target because that's what these are end of wave five time targets. So again, as long as we haven't traded below last week's low, uh, the assumption is bonds and notes are going to be sideways to up uh, for another uh, probably couple of, couple of weeks into February 21st or so and then complete this five wave advance which will just be a wave a of a much higher time frame abc correction that'll have several months and quite a ways to go on the upside but it's a great immediate trade opportunity in notes and in bonds well that's it for part one of our long-term reports updates that we do every four to six weeks for our dt report subscribers and if you found it useful please check out our dt reports at dynamictraders.com and just keep in mind for this upcoming week through sunday february 17th only you'll get an additional month uh, four months for the price of, of three if you subscribe to subscribe to one of our dt reports i think you'll find them really useful as well as an ongoing trading education uh, besides the great trade tips, trade strategies that we give you every day in our reports. Take care when I hope to be of service to you for many, many years to come.